Samuel Hearn. Samuel Hearn, February 1745, November 1792, was an English explorer, fur trader, author, and naturalist. He was the first European to make an overland excursion across northern Canada to the Arctic Ocean, actually Coronation Gulf, via the Coppermine River. In 1774, Hearn built Cumberland House for the Hudson's Bay Company, its first interior trading post and the first permanent settlement in present Saskatchewan. Biography Samuel Hearn was born in February 1745 in London, UK. Hearn's father was secretary of the Waterworks, of the London Bridge who died in 1748. His mother's name was Diana, and his sister's name was Sarah, three years younger than Samuel. Samuel Hearn joined the British Royal Navy in 1756 at the age of 11 as midshipman under the fighting Captain Samuel Hood. He remained with Hood during the Seven Years' War, seeing considerable action during the conflict, including the bombardment of Le Havre. At the end of the Seven Years' War, having served in the English Channel and then the Mediterranean, he left the Navy in 1763. In February 1766, he joined the Hudson's Bay Company as a mate on the sloop Churchill which was then engaged in the Inuit trade out of Prince of Wales Fort, Churchill, Manitoba. Two years later he became mate on the brigantine Charlotte and participated in the company's short-lived black whale fishery. In 1767, he found the remains of James Knight's expedition. In 1768, he examined portions of the Hudson Bay coast with a view to improving the cod fishery. During this time he gained a reputation for snowshoeing. Hearn was able to improve his navigational skills by observing William Wales who was at Hudson Bay during 1768 to 1769 after being commissioned by the Royal Society to observe the transit of Venus with Joseph Diamond. Exploration The English on Hudson Bay had long known that the Indians to the northwest used native copper, as indicated by such words as yellow knife. When, in 1768, a northern Indian, some say it was Maton Abbey, brought lumps of copper to Churchill, the governor, Moses Norton, decided to send Hearn in search of a possible copper mine. Doubt the basic theme of Hearn's three journeys is the Englishman's ignorance of the methods of travel through this very difficult country and their dependence on Indians who knew the land and how to live off of it. First journey, since there was no canoe route to the northwest, the plan was to go on foot over the frozen winter ground. Without canoes, they would have to carry as much food as possible and then live off the land. Hearn planned to join a group of northern Indians that had come to trade at Churchill and somehow induce them to lead him to the copper mine. He left Churchill on November 6, 1769 along with two company employees, two Cree hunters and a band of Chippewians and went north across the Seal River, an east-west river north of Churchill. By 19th of November their European provisions gave out and their hunters had found little game, Hearn had left too late in the season and the caribou had already left the barren grounds for the shelter of the forested country further south. They headed west and north, finding only a few ptarmigan, fish and three stray caribou. Dot the Indians, who knew the country, had better sense than to risk starvation in this way and began deserting. When the last Indians left, Hearn and his European companions returned to the sheltered valley of the Seal River, where he was able to find venison, and reached Churchill on 11th of December. Second journey, since he could not control the northern Indians, Hearn proposed to try again using home guards, that is, Cree who lived around the post and hunted in exchange for European supplies. He left Churchill on 23rd of February. Reaching the Seal River, he found good hunting and followed it west until he reached a large lake, probably Sethnani Lake. Here he decided to wait for better weather and live by fishing. In April the fish began to give out. On 24th of April a large body of Indians, mostly women, arrived from the south for the annual goose hunt. On 19th of May the geese arrived and there was now plenty to eat. They headed north and east past Barlzone Lake. By June the geese had flown further north and they were again threatened with famine. Dot at one point they killed three musk oxen and had to eat them raw because it was too wet to light a fire. They crossed the Kazan River above Yafkeed Lake where they found good hunting and fishing and then went west to Lake Dubont which is about 450 miles northwest of Churchill. On 14th of August his quadrant was destroyed, which accounts for the inaccuracy of latitudes on the remainder to this and the next journey. At this point the sources become vague, but Hearn returned to Churchill in the autumn. On his return journey he met Maton Abbey who was to be his guide on the next journey. Maton Abbey may well have saved him from freezing or starving to death. Most of the land Hearn crossed on his second journey is very desolate and was not properly explored again until Joseph Tyrrell in 1893. Third journey, 
Hearn contrived to travel as the only European with a group of Chippewaian guides led by Mitonabi. The group also included eight of Mitonabi's wives to act as beasts of burden in the sledge traces, camp servants, and cooks. This third expedition set out in December 1770, to reach the Coppermine River in summer, by which he could descend to the Arctic in canoes. Mitonabi kept a fast pace, so fast they reached the Great Caribou Traverse before provisions dwindled and in time for the spring hunt. Here Northern Indian, Dean, hunters gathered to hunt the vast herds of caribou migrating north for the summer. A store of meat was laid up for Hearn's voyage and a band of yellow knife Dean joined the expedition. Mitonabi ordered his women to wait for his return in the Athabasca country to the west. The Dean were generally a mild and peaceful people, however, they were in a state of conflict with the Inuit. A great number of Yellowknife Indians joined Hearn's party to accompany them to the Coppermine River with intent to kill Inuit, who were understood to frequent that river in considerable numbers. On July 14, 1771, they reached the Coppermine River, a small stream flowing over a rocky bed in the barren lands of the Little Sticks. A few miles down the river, just above the cataract, were the domed wigwams of an Eskimo camp. At 1 a.m. on July 17, 1771 Matonabi and the other Indians fell upon the sleeping Eskimo in a ruthless massacre. Approximately 20 men, women, and children were killed, this would be known as the Massacre at Bloody Falls. A few days later Hearn was the first European to reach the shore of the Arctic Ocean by an overland route. By tracing the Coppermine River to the Arctic Ocean he had established there was no northwest passage through the continent at lower latitudes. This expedition also proved successful in its primary goal by discovering copper in the Coppermine River Basin, however, an intensive search of the area yielded only one four-pound lump of copper and commercial mining was not considered viable. Mitonabi led Hearn back to Churchill by a wide westward circle past Bear Lake in Athabasca country. In midwinter he became the first European to see and cross Great Slave Lake. Hearn returned to Fort Prince of Wales on June 30, 1772 having walked some 5,000 miles, 8,000 kilometers, and explored more than 250,000 square miles, 650,000 square kilometers. Later Life Hearn was sent to Saskatchewan to establish Fort Cumberland, the second inland trading post for the Hudson's Bay Company in 1774, the first being Henley House, established in 1743, 200 kilometers, 120 miles, up the Albany River. Having learned to live off the land, he took minimal provisions for the eight Europeans and two home guard Crees who accompanied him. After consulting some local chiefs, Hearn chose a strategic site on Pine Island Lake in the Saskatchewan River. 60 miles, 97 kilometers, above Fort Pasquoya. The site was linked to both the Saskatchewan River trade route and the Churchill system. He became governor of Fort Prince of Wales on January 22, 1776. On August 8, 1782 Hearn and his complement of 38 civilians were confronted by a French force under the Comte de la Perouse composed of three ships, including one of 74 guns, and 290 soldiers. As a veteran Hearn recognized hopeless odds and surrendered without a shot. Hearn and some of the other prisoners were allowed to sail back to England from Hudson Strait in a small sloop. Hearn returned the next year but found trade had deteriorated. The native population had been decimated by European-introduced diseases such as measles and smallpox, as well as starvation due to the lack of normal hunting supplies of powder and shot. Mitonabi had committed suicide and the rest of Churchill's leading Indians had moved to other posts. Hearn's health began to fail and he delivered up command at Churchill on August 16, 1787 and returned to England. In the last decade of his life he used his experiences on the Barrens, on the northern coast, and in the interior to help naturalists like Thomas Pennant in their researches. His friend William Wales was a teacher at Christ's Hospital and he assisted Hearn to write A Journey from Prince of Wales's Fort in Hudson's Bay to the Northern Ocean. This was published in 1795, three years after Hearn's death of dropsy in November 1792 at the age of 47. Legacy on July 1, 1767 he chiseled his name on smooth, glaciated stone at Sloops Cove near Fort Prince of Wales where it remains today. One of Wales's pupils, the poet Samuel Taylor Coleridge, made a brief notebook entry where he mentioned Hearn's book. Hearn may have been one of the inspirations for the rhyme of the ancient mariner. Hearn's journals and maps were proven correct by Sir John Franklin when he verified the discovery of the massacre at Bloody Falls during his own Coppermine expedition of 1819 to 1822. He wrote, 
Hearn is mentioned by Charles Darwin in the sixth chapter of The Origin of Species. Samuel Hearn's account of his exploration of the North, A Journey from Prince of Wales Fort in Hudson's Bay to the Northern Ocean, originally published in 1795, was edited by Joseph Tyrell and reprinted as part of the general series of the Champlain Society. There is a junior-slash-senior high school that was built and named after him in Inuvik, Northwest Territories. Data School in Toronto, Ontario was also built in his name in 1973. Ontario was also built in his name in 1973.